Well, it's Sunday and the weather's not too bad today. That wind has died down quite a lot now, which I'm always grateful for. But I've got loads and loads of things that I want to get started off. So we can get lots of seedlings on go before end of April. And because I'm going to be pricking these out as soon as they're big enough, I only have to put them in little containers like that. You can get quite a lot of little seedlings out of an area that's hardly taking up any compost. Sometimes I use things like this. That's got lots of holes in bottom. It's not a bad depth, but it's got quite a big area. So what I do with these is I tend to split them so I can put more than one thing in. Because I don't want a full tray of cabbages or something like that. That'd be far too many to pot on and way too many that I need for the area that I've got to plant in. But when it comes to those little plastic ones that you can get from Wilco's, we can get four in one of these trays. And this tray's got no holes in bottom, so it's perfect for bottom water and everything. Because at least that way, you're not splashing water all over the top, your tiny little delicate seedlings run at risk of flattening them down onto that compost because then they could probably die. So you're better off bottom watering things and that is quite a small area. So something like that you could multi-sow different varieties and get them labelled up and then you can pop that in your house where it's a little bit warmer to help that germination process speed up. So today I'm going to go with these ones. So we'll just get some compost in. And I don't fill them to the top either. There's no need because these plants aren't going to be in this compost long enough to need any amount of depth. All we're trying to do is get them started. Minimum compost taking up minimum space. And before I put any seeds into these trays, I always make sure they've had a really good deep watering. Because as we do with quite a lot of things, we saturate that compost and then we cover them with cling film because then that holds the moisture in for even longer. Plus the other good thing about these containers is because they're transparent, you can easily check the moisture levels so you don't over water your seedlings. And at the same time, you can very clearly see that root system. So then you can make sure that your plants aren't getting too tangled together. So now that's been done, we can sow our seeds. And one of the seeds I've been looking forward to trying this year, it's called Broccoletta. We've never tried it before, so we're gonna give it a go this year. Basically, exactly the same seeds as any other brassica. And we'll just sprinkle some on top there. At least by doing this, we can confine each variety to its own container, while still only using quite a small space. So just broadcast quite a few seeds on there. We don't need loads of these plants, but we like to know we're gonna get some rather than waiting for nothing. So that is why we multi sow them in the first place. And I'll just pop the label in the corner of that as well so we know what's what. And I also need some more cauliflowers. And this variety is called All Year Round. So I assume it does what it says on the packet. We can sow these at any time of year, whether it be spring, summer or autumn. So exactly the same again. Quite a few seeds are going on. And that all important label, because all these brassica plants look pretty much the same. And I also want some extra savoy cabbages. And we're going to try and grow these in containers as well as in ground. See how they get on. And then I've got a pack of quite old seeds actually. But there's lots of seeds in it. So... I'm going to overseed this one just to see if any of these seeds are still viable. And this is a lettuce that's called Little Gem. So basically, a mini romaine lettuce 
which are quite easy to grow and they're really nice. So you can see that I'm putting lots and lots of seeds on here because if none of these seeds work, then I might as well just throw that entire packet away and get some fresh. There's no way that you wouldn't get quite a few germinating in there with the amount we've just put on if these seeds were viable. So that'll be a test and we like to do that as we go through the season as well. So we can just get rid of things that might potentially be wasting us time. That's that last label going in. And because we're trying to get these seeds to germinate and break the surface of this compost as quick as possible, we're going to give it a very, very light covering using a colander to basically dust compost over the top of those seeds. Of course, you don't have to do it like this if you don't want. You can just cover them up normally. So the lightest covering we could possibly give it and hopefully we'll get germination and seedlings poking out of that compost really quickly. So now we just have to give them a light watering. And then I'm gonna cover this old tree with cling film. Basically creating my own homemade little propagator. It'll keep that moisture in while these seeds germinate. And again, I'll use those labels just to hold that in place for now. And that's that job done. So we've got four different varieties of seedlings on the way. And we can either leave that outside or we could take it indoors because these varieties as well don't mind germinating in cooler temperatures so that's entirely up to us if we want to move that process forward we'd take them indoors and all the while that I've been doing that I've been saving all that lumpy compost that we sieve out and now we've got a container that's full of it it's perfectly good compost just no good for seed starting and this is a 10 litre pot. So we can now use that to grow another plant in. Now I've got a few of these Savoy cabbages. They've been in this pack quite a while, so we need to think about getting them moved out at this point at year and letting them grow on. And it don't matter that they're a bit tall because we can sink them deep, which is what we'll do. So I'm basically just gonna loosen off those roots at the bottom and then we'll bunch it up and we'll plant it that deep, taking away all that excess stem and it'll grow perfectly fine. So another really simple job, make a nice deep hole and get that plant buried right down to there. Take all that stretch out of that stem, make sure you firm it in. Try and keep it central as well. And if you've got plants that are in your garden and you notice that the stems are getting a little bit tall, you can mound up around that stem as it grows like that. Just keep burying it and burying it if that happens to you. Now that's that set up. One thing you might notice with your brassicas as you go through a season is that sometimes the leaves start to turn purple. And there's a couple of reasons for that happening. It could either be inconsistent watering. So either it's getting too much water or it's not getting enough. So that can be easily sorted by making sure you water it at set intervals fruit week when it needs it. But another reason for that could be a deficiency in either nitrogen or phosphorus or both. And that's easily fixed once again. You just need to feed your plant and give it a bit of feed every week. Especially if you're growing things in containers because they've got a very restricted amount of nutrients within this container. So if you keep on top of that, then you shouldn't have that problem this coming season. But it's not something you can't fix. If you do buy fertilizers and you have a look on back, it'll tell you what it contains. So you're looking for something that's got nitrogen and phosphorus in it. 
and then obviously you want to make a diluted version from these so you can either use tomato food or you can use liquid seaweed some people use miracle Grow, but I find that to be a bit more expensive than I want to pay and I basically just take one capful pop that in a watering can these are a lot better value for money because that one container makes 180 litres of feed so that's basically going to last you all the way through season and that's the tomato food the liquid seaweed makes 360 litres and I think I got those from own bargains two pound a piece so well worth money and then we can give this plant a bit of a feed and we're watering it at the same time so that's another container brassica all set up and when you do that Try and water around the base of your plants and not over the tops at leaves because that can just lead to disease later on. But since I've just made up a full watering can, I might as well do the plants in here and all the plants in greenhouse. And that job's done for a week or more. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I always appreciate it. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and want to see what else we're going to be growing through this coming season, then please hit that subscribe button. And press that notifications bell and we'll see you on the next one take care